Oh, that's great! Bye!
<laughs> Patrick!
SpongeBob resides within a green love red room. Woohoo! <laughs> 
Club World was conceptualized uh, quite a while after we began development of Around the Clock. It was about halfway through all of the levels, I'd say, around the ballpark there when we had begun work on it, because we already had all of the house levels uh, worked on and a couple of other levels finished as well. Because Glove World is our humble beginning to this you know, tragic tale of woe and despair going on in Bikini Bottom, we had to take a more like chaotic route. When I had to think of how the story was going to begin, I had to keep in mind the knowledge prior of the Jellians in terms of the SpongeBob lore. Because by that point, they already knew that the Jellians were a thing, and the Jellians were well aware of who exactly ended them during their first reign of terror. So Overlord, respectively, went to target SpongeBob and basically everyone in a singular cluster. So Glove World, what a prime opportunity because it's also Squid's concert along with a firework display. So that would provide them perfect cover to swoop down and strike. So this level's tr treated more as like an introductory sort of yet chaotic scenario that you're kind of thrust into. And based on feedback, a lot of people liked that. So I cannot complain there. Glove World was generally an easy level to make, I'd say. Like, this, the whole theme park, the tunnel, all that was, um... It was pretty easy to make, I'd say. It wasn't so much as smooth sailing with the maze. The maze is actually what we joke around with, one of the uh, cursed levels of the game, because of how very fragile and delicate it is. We ran into quite a few problems while uh, in development. Certain areas would end up stuttering, causing quite a large amount of lag and freezing. It wasn't optimized properly as a result. Now, in terms of cut content, it actually does relate with this as well, because originally, if you take a look at the concept art, there was originally a love tapper machine that would emerge from the ground, set itself up in three clicks, and if you were still around it while it was poised, it would slam down on you, crushing you. It would be another trap to add to the various other traps we have within the maze, but because of the lack of optimization, it would actually cause even more freezing than what we would have expected, so that had to be terminated. We also can't forget the original jellyfish room, which used to feature a mother jellyfish instead of the red menaces that would fold down on you. The way it would work was that if you stepped on a pressure plate, the mother jellyfish would activate and zap the player. Then, we originally had the sea urchin room have actual sea urchins, and when you stepped on them, they would permanently slow you down because they would stick onto your screen for an extended period of time. So it was more of a passive trap room, more so than anything. But the amount of sea urchins we had within the room also caused the game's uh, optimization and frame rate to fail. So that had to be scrapped as well in favor of a harmless sea urchin column. As for our main stars of Glove World, left and right Glovey, left Glovey being an original character designed by me, while right Glovey is actually a character that exists in the show already, known as Glovey Glove. They were both designed to be, you know, nice controllable threats as a first-timer experience, but we wanted to make them unique. We didn't want them to just chase the player around. So I tasked Dave with creating a almost slender-like AI, minus the danger of looking at them. Left and right Glovey were uh, originally pretty easy uh, characters to make, 
when I made their AI all site-based and such, I ran into a couple of issues with that. I had to use box triggers to be able to detect if the player was looking at the AI instead of a line trace or some sort of, you know, different mechanic to detect if the glovey was, you know, in front of the player or not. Pretty much all that wasn't working and I had to settle with box triggers and it seemed to work out pretty well. The only problem I ran into when using box triggers were that it would go through walls, but it didn't seem to happen that often because they're pretty short radius of the box trigger. So all in all, I'd say that AI turned out pretty well. Uh, I will say that I felt as if the map was poorly designed on my part to not show the player where they initially started, which did confuse playtesters and YouTubers alike. I will, uh, I will admit to that. With this said, this level was generally well received, and it was a pretty good introductory level that scared the absolute out of everyone who played it. And it was quite an enjoyable experience to watch and receive feedback. Honest feedback, might I add. I want to thank everyone who's done that during this development phase. Thank you so much.